Hallelujah. Amen. I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. You have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. And give glory to the honor unto the Almighty God who is Jesus Christ the King. Greetings my brethren on this welcome to our teleconference another Sunday. We are here to rejoice in the Lord and to give Him thanks and to give Him praise for His goodness towards us. God bless every one of you who has joined us and we are just here to glorify the God, the God of our salvation. Songwriter says, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. His goodness. His mercies, His goodness is running after me. And we know we'll thank God because our God is good. And that's why we take time out to remember Him, to glorify Him, to lift up His wonderful name because He is worthy. He is worthy. God bless you. Before we do, I'm going to uh, see, ask Pastor Winston, Pastor Winston to lead us. Oh, he's, I think his mic is off. I'm going to pray a short prayer and go into the Word of God. Pastor Winston, I think you're on. Yes, sir. Okay, can, sir. can you lead us in a short prayer before I go into the Word? Bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Yes, yeah, yeah. Let us pray. Greetings, greetings. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for me, Mr. Thompson. We thank you for the wonderful work that he's doing. My God, you pray right now that you may go and put us Lord, and lead the way for us tonight. As we come into your presence, to lift up your holy name, because you are God. You sit high, you crow. We live in the hand, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. I want to thank God for you and everyone that has joined us. We are we rejoicing in the Lord. We Bless the Lord because He's so, so good. He's so, so good to all of us. I'm going to go straight into the Word of God. And um, um, the topic the Lord gave me is about long-suffering. 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 You know, we have to realize that this salvation is not a bed of ease. And coming to God, to serve God, to worship God, to follow Jesus is not easy. You know, and Jesus, Jesus openly tell us. If any man should come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So, he's not pretending. God is never pretending that this road is an easy road. He laid the cards on the table for us. So, I'm going to start reading from Peter. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to start and read it from verse 1 to 13. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 13 as we go on. This, this, this second epistle, beloved, I write unto you, in which I stir up your pure mind in the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the word which is spoken before by the holy prophets and by the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, the Lord and Savior. Knowing first that in the... That there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willing, willingly are ignorant of, that, the, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that, that then was, being overflowed with water, perish. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment, perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this thing, of one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward, 
to us was not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord is as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, Seeing then that all these things must be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting for the coming of the day of the Lord God, wherein the heavens being on fire is with dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, where dwelleth righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, yeah, my topic is about long-suffering. Long-suffering. So Peter mentioned here about the long-suffering of God. Um, so it says, The Lord, the Lord, our Lord, our God, is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us words, that not any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is the God we serve. He is long-suffering. He's patient. How, how, how patient can you get to, to us words? You know, um, they came to Jesus and they said, how, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, not seven times but 70 times 7. 70 times 7. That's how patient God is and long-suffering. Patient give us long, patient, long-suffering give us patient. And as I mentioned last week about patient is something a child of God must have. And when we are prepared to suffer, because many of the apostles and many of the disciples and apostles, they were prepared to suffer. They were prepared to go through the fire. They were prepared to go through the water. They were prepared to go in prison, to be locked away. They were prepared to be beaten and scourged and all sorts of things, ridiculed. Some were stoned. But long-suffering and patient, patience and long-suffering. The Lord is not slack. This is verse 9 of Second Peter chapter 3. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. It is mean to say whatever God promised. He will keep his promise. He's not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. So the word of God is sure. Because he himself said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Imagine. The heavens that we see, we look up in the sky, we see the heavens. Look around us, we see the earth. We see all the nations and all the countries of the earth. And they will pass away, as Peter mentioned later on in this ch chapter. They will pass away. They will dissolve. They will be burnt up by the power of Almighty God. But God is not slack con concerning His promise. He's a promise keeper. And I like somebody who can keep their promises. Nobody likes people who break promises. But God is not like that. He's a promise keeper. He is long-suffering. Can you imagine how patient God has been? And all the things that have happened over the years and throughout the earth. Remember the genocide and all the killings and all the destruction and all the natural disasters that has passed through this earth. God is still patient towards us. And you know, uh, today, as I uh, ministered before the people of God, I said that God has a door open for us from the beginning of creation, from Adam sinned against God. God left a door open, and the door is a door of repentance. And he's been patiently waiting for man to come into that door, to walk through that door, because that is the only way that we can reconcile to God through the door of repentance. 
The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but he's long suffering, he's patient. Look at Noah when God told Noah to build the ark, and he was there 120 years preaching to the people to come into the ark, to come repent. All he said was repent. Come through the door of repentance, come. No one wanted to come. No one wanted to be saved. No one cared. No one believed. They, they doubted. You know that uh, rain was going to fall, but rain fell abundantly. Fill the earth. But it's long-suffering towards us that not any. See how loving God is? He's long-suffering and patient because he don't want any to perish. It's no pleasure. God don't give God have no pleasure putting people in hell. The hell was created for the devil and his angels. Hell was not created for man. But because man is following the devil and his pernicious ways, they have they will go where he is going. Eternal damnation. The Lord is not slack. He's long suffering to us words. Bless you, Brother Clinton. Bless you, sir. Welcome. You. Welcome, sir. We're reading now about long suffering. We're talking about long suffering tonight. The long oh. suffering. And I'm reading from Peter, Second Peter chapter 3. I know you always have your Bible. Second okay. Peter chapter 3. I'm on verse 9 at the moment. Okay. Second chapter Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. We are now. Yes, so the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. God love us. God love us with such a great love. And what, what are we doing with the love that God has bestowed upon us? What love that God has bestowed upon us? What blessings that God has bestowed upon us? What God has given us now, the Bible says, even the angels in heaven desire to look into. They can't understand how God has looked down upon us and chose us to follow him, to walk with him. And you know, he, he called us his brethren, he called us his friend. What great things, what blessings, what honor, what great honor has we as children of God, long-suffering towards us. See, God is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. And, and if we read, Ephesians chapter 4, we're on to Ephesians chapter 4, and from verse 1, Ephesians, it reads here, Ephesians chapter 4, Therefore, I therefore, this is Paul writing to the Ephesians, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, we are prisoners, we are prisoners for Jesus, beseech you that he walk worthy of this, of the vocation, we are into your call. I beseech you, Paul is saying, I beseech you, brethren, walk. You've got such a great honor. You've got such a great blessing. I beseech you, I beg you, walk worthy. Do your best. Serve God. Love God. Honor God. Praise God. Thank God. I beseech you, brethren, walk worthy of this vocation. We're on to your call. And it's on... Uh, po po Paul went on to say, with lowliness and meekness and with long suffering. With long suffering. Bearing one another in love. Long suffering. God has already expressed his love to all of us by long suffering. And Paul is saying now to the Ephesian brethren, meekness, lowliness, Long suffering. Long suffering means that you we are prepared to go through the fire. We are prepared to go through the water. We are prepared, prepared to take up our cross. And sometimes our cross is heavy and it's hard to bear. But we are prepared to travel on, walk on, going forward as a good soldier. Because we are soldiers. We are soldiers of the cross. Yes. And so soldiers have to endure. Imagine these soldiers, these natural soldiers, what they have to go through, the training they have to go through to, to enter into the army. 
You know, the hills they have to climb, the weight they have to carry on their shoulder, the mud they have to go through, and all these things. These are natural things for soldiers. And they have to go through it. And so we are soldiers. And we are called, it says, in all lowliness and meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Yes, that's what we are called, to keep the unity of the Spirit, the oneness. This, you know, uh, as the Bible says, how wonderful, behold, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. It is this unity, endeavor to keep it together, endeavor to unite ourselves in God, in the Lord. Because he went on to say in Ephesians 4, There is one body and one spirit, even as he are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. It's a oneness that we share. The oneness we share among ourselves, we share with God. It's one spirit. The writer says the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. When Jesus was dead, there was a spirit, the spirit that rose him up from the dead. He says that same spirit is in me and in you. It's not a different spirit. It's one. See, so, so Paul said to the Ephesians, there is one body and one spirit. Mm -hmm. So we are all of one body and we are all of one spirit. Where should be a division among us? Where comes division among us, seeing as we are one body and one spirit? We are not separated. We are not separated in God. Even as He are called unto one hope of your calling, it's one salvation, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one Father of all who is above all, the Father Jesus. He is above yeah. all. He is through all and He is in all. He is in all. There is no place that the Spirit of God is not. There is no place that the Spirit of God is absent. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. And He is omniscient. He knows everything. He is everywhere. And He is all powerful. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes it is just awful when we think of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where we think how awesome He is. How great He is. And you know, when we look at ourselves, we, we seem like just insignificant men. We seem very insignificant to ourselves, but to God, because the Spirit of God and the love of God and the grace of God has made us so we can say we are now sons and daughters of God. We are sons of God. Verse 7 says, um, but unto, one, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. After his resurrection, he ascended on high to sit upon the right hand of power, the right hand of God, to make intercession for us. How great and how wonderful is our God. Shouldn't we love him? Shouldn't we serve him? Shouldn't we honor him? Shouldn't we have time, take time out, take time out to give God praise, to give him glory? You know, I just love to see the saints of God worship God in spirit. And I love to see the anointing of God upon the people of God. And we can get it. We can get it. We've got it. And we can get it. In Galatians chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, But, but the spirit. Fruit of the Spirit is love. It's very important that we know the fruits of the Spirit because we are spiritual people. And if we're spiritual people, we are to bear spiritual fruits. You know, you, you can't plant an apple tree and expect pear. 
you plant an apple tree, you, you expect it to bear apple. You know, so we are spiritual people and we bear spiritual fruit. So it says, Paul is writing here again to the Galatians, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. We must have love. We must have love. If we claim to be children of God, we must have love. Love, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, hallelujah, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. How great. When we realize the fruit of the Spirit, we must check ourselves. What are we bearing these fruits? Are we bearing this fruit? The fruit of love and joy. I mean, when we have Jesus, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. There has to be joy on the inside. The devil can beat us, knock us down, kick us, thump us, whatever. There has to be joy on the inside. And the joy on the inside. The peace on the inside. And the determination. And the long-suffering. And the meekness and the gentleness and the goodness and the faith. That's why Paul says, when Paul realized these fruits, these wonderful fruits that we, we possess, he says, what can separate me from the love of God? What can separate us? Things present, things to come, height and death. No, we are more than conquerors. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can move us when we bear these fruits. And these fruits are the fruits that God wants us to be bear, bear and to bring forth and to show forth. And they that are in Christ, listen to this one. They, this is um, Galatians um, 5 verse 24. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with affection and loss. Those that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with affection and loss. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us be desire let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. You know, when we have these fruits and bearing these fruits, we are free from every everything. We are in God. We are soaked up. We are soaked up in God. And we do not live a life of fear and we do not live a life of doubt. We don't worry too much about what the world is doing. We don't worry too much about the plans of people who want to do so, so many plans to kill, destroy people and whatever they want to do. And all these wars that is going on. We, 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 we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Amen. Amen. We are separated from the world. You know, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not children of this world. We are children of the heavenly throne. We are children of God. We are children of righteousness. We are children of love. We are children of peace. We are children of joy. We are children of long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and all these things which there is no law. There's no law that can hold us. There's no law that can hold us. Going on into 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and from verse 1, read it says, Paul again writing, I love the writing of Paul. We then, as workers together with, with him, we're working together with him. We're all co-workers. 
We are here tonight on this teleconference. We are all co-workers. We are all playing a part in the kingdom of God. Just the acknowledgement of having time to hear the word of God, to join our hearts and our minds together. We are workers together with God, in God. He says, we as workers together in with Him, with God, beseech you also to receive not the grace of God in vain. For He said, I have heard thee in the acceptable time, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense to anything that the ministry may not be blamed. So we have to live before the world. And because we bear these fruits, brethren, because we bear these fruits, I aforementioned these fruits that we bear, the world see that in us. And so the ministry will not be blamed if we bear these fruits. It's including long-suffering. Giving no offense to anything that the ministry should not blame. We as children of God have to be sure that whatever we do, the ministry, the ministry is the ministry that Jesus came to establish. And he established it in the disciples who later became apostles. He established that ministry of righteousness. And we are to make, you know, if you have something, if you, uh, for instance, if you represent a con company, you, you're representing that company. If you're away from there, they can see that this person represents the company. And you have to, sh you have a kind of mannerism that you have to establish to say that, you know, you are different because you are that company. You're representing that company. You don't do anything that that, that, that person comes from that company. That company is not a good company. You so, so it is with Christ. Whatever we do must be to glorify him and said so the ministry should not be blamed but in all things are proving ourselves as ministers of God in patient in patient in much patient in affliction so affliction is not nice in necessities in distress distress is not nice in stripes in imprisonment in turmoil and in labor, in watching and fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfreeing. How wonderful. Brethren, it, 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 I think when we hear these words and we acknowledge that, you know, this God we serve, that, you know, I said today that. Um, in the ministry that um, God never asks us or demand us to do something that he himself has not done and I will, I'm going to repeat that I said God has never commanded us asked us to do anything that he himself has not done he's not a God who say do as I do, do as I say, but don't do what, do, follow, do what I do, but don't do as I say. Do as I say, but don't do as I do. He's not, this, he's not that kind of God. He's a God of his word. And remember we read about him and long-suffering, his long-suffering towards us. And Paul is writing here and saying we should be, we expect to be in distress at times, and afflictions, and necessities, distress, tumult, in labor, watching, and fasting, by knowledge, by long-suffering and kindness. This is what we are called to, and we should rejoice that God has called us. You know, when we think about the promise that God has made, and we mention about His promise, He's not slack. Concerning his promises, we men we read about in Peter, Second Peter chapter two. God is not slack concerning his promise. If we think about what God has promised us, whenever these distress and affliction and whatever come upon us, we will be singing and glorifying and magnifying God. 
Remember Peter and Paul and Silas was in prison? And while they were in prison, they were singing the praises of God? Because they realized that God has made a promise to them. That he will not fail them. And that he has gone to prepare a place for them. For us. I mean, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for us. For the children that love him. We can't imagine. Uh, I think sometimes we need to stretch our um, imagination. We, sometimes we need to stretch our imagination. Imagine heaven. Imagine you and I in heaven. Just imagine. how we, we, can't, we can't imagine it. But we can stretch our imagination. How beautiful. We don't need the sunlight in heaven. Because Jesus himself is a light and he light up heaven. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I, I'll give you a comparison to what light is light against. When you light, light, put light against light. We can put light against light, okay? So, for instance, at night, um, we may, the, 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 the sun goes down and the room becomes dark. We switch on our light and we get light. The, the, the electric light light up the room. When it comes to morning, we have a different light. The sun rises and we have a different light. How, look at the comparison of those lights. The light that light up your room and the light that light up the world. And imagine that the light that light up the world is nothing compared to the light that light up heaven. That is mind blowing. We have to stretch our mind, stretch our imagination and think what it's like. Imagine we get into heaven, being able to ascend and descend. And the heavens stretch out like a curtain. It is endless. There's no barriers. Here in this world, we can go from east to west and then that's it. We go from east to west, we go from west to east. There's east and west. There's no limits. And there's no sickness. And there's no pain. And there's no council tax. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. Praise the name of the Lord. And I read on Matthews. Now Jesus laid it clear for us that we have to go through this, through the valley. We have to go through the water. We have to go through the flood. But we should, we should do it with joy. We should do it with joy. Because, so in Matthew chapter 16, it says, And from that time, Peter, Jesus began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests, scribes, and be killed and raised on the third day. And Peter took him and began to rebuke. Imagine that. <laughs> Peter took the Lord and began to rebuke the Lord. Can you imagine that? And say unto him, Be far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou art an offense unto me. For thou savour it for the things that be of you savour not for the things that be of God but of men. So Jesus knew what was going to happen to him when he go into Jerusalem and those final days of his ministry, and he told his disciples, and Peter said, No, no, no. You're not going to suffer, you're not going to die. But he knew that he came for that purpose. So he said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou offendest me, and thou savest not for the things of God, but for the things of men. Then he went on to say, then, Jesus unto his, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. 
For whosoever saves life shall lose it, and whosoever loses life for my sake shall find it. Lose this life. If we lose this life, we don't really lose anything. Because this is not the life. As I always say, we are passing through. We, some people are so afraid of losing life. But how, a, a seed for instance, if you put a seed in the ground, that seed cannot go until it dies. It cannot bear until it dies. It has to die. And our blessing is not in this life. Let us not be deceived and to believe that our blessings, our aspiration, our, our hope are in this life. The Bible says if in this life only we have hope, we would be of men most miserable. But thank God we have a life, a life, a true life, that there's no corruption, a life of hope, a life of peace, a life of joy that God has promised everyone that love him and serve him and follow him. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to leave a little space for some of my brethren to come and give a testimony. Sister Rose, I would like you to sing a song for us as well. Praise the Lord. Um, so I'm going to leave a little space. Um, ask Sister Rose to sing and then I'm going to ask Pastor Winston to give us a few words of encouragement and um, and then we move out from there. Sister Rose, Greetings. sing us a song, oh, sing us, oh, gosh. <laughs> find a song and sing us a song, grace us with your voice. Okay. Uh, give us a Let's testimony go. then, whatever the Lord lead you. Okay, okay. I'll give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. Amen. You alone I long to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. And I will give Amen. you all my worship. Amen. And I will give you all my praise. Oh, no. And you alone no. I long to worship. Oh, no. And you alone Amen. are worthy of my praise. I will worship, I will worship with all of my heart, all of my heart. And I will praise you, I will praise you with all of my strength, all of my strength. And I will seek you, I will seek you all the days of my life, all of my days. And I will follow, I will follow all of your ways. And I will give, I will give you all my worship. Amen. I will give. You yeah. all my praise. Oh. You alone I long to worship. Yeah. And you alone are worthy of mm. my praise. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. And you alone I long Amen. to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. I will bow down, I will bow down. Hail you as king, hail you as king. And I will serve you, I will serve you. Give you everything, everything. And I will lift up, I will lift up my eyes to your throne, eyes to your throne. And I will trust you, 
you will trust you. I will trust you alone. Trust you Amen. alone. And I will give, I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. And you alone I long to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. And I will oh, give Amen. you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. And you alone I long to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. And I will give you all my Amen. worship. And I will give you all my praise. Oh, you alone oh, I long to worship. Hallelujah. And you alone are worthy of my praise. And I will give one more time you all my, my worship. worship. Hallelujah. Amen. You all, all my, my praise. praise. And you alone, you I alone. long to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. And you alone, I long to worship. And you alone are worthy of my praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rose. God bless you for a beautiful song. God bless you. Wonderful. I will give you all my worship and we I will give you all my praise. You know, God wants us to give us all. Give give, give him give him our all. That's what God wants us to do. And it's not asking too much. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. So before I call Pastor Winston, I'm going to call um, our brother Clinton. Brother Clinton, God bless you. Be with us tonight. May you give us a testimony of whatever the Lord put on your heart before I call Pastor Winston to come. Brother Clinton. Yes. First of all, I must say greetings. Greetings, uh, sir. Greetings. For, um, oh, brother. God bless you. The teleconference that you um, are doing, I know there is so much people who are satisfied with it and, you know, they, I think their heart is full of praises. Amen. You know, I thank God because he wake me up this morning. Yes. Into, into this beautiful um, Sunday morning, the first day of the week. When we go to sleep, we never know that he would wake up. That's right. Because when I'm when I'm on his sleeping, he just sleep. Yes. That's it. But if God if God doesn't call him, I'll say, Look, it is time for you to wake up, then he will never wake That's up. That's right. So we have to give God thanks and praise. You know, there's so much is going on today in our lives. Not only mine or yours, Brother Thompson, but there's so many people out there who some some of us are really suffering. Yes. And some of us some of us said there is no God. But to me and to you and to the majority, there is God. And he is alive. Amen. And he's alive and, and well. Yes. And yeah. you know, when we think when we think of the goodness of what he has done for us, we have to say our soul cry out hallelujah. You know, yes. and I praise him, I praise him and I make my mind up that I will praise him to the rest of my days. And these are my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Clinton, a sincere man of God who love God. And thank God for you and your faith towards God. Towards God, we know you know how you love the Lord and continue to give Him all the praise, give Him all the glory that is due to His name because He's He's worthy. He's worthy of our praises. God bless you, Brother Clinton. I want to turn over now to our Pastor Winston from the Bible Rock Church. Bible Rock Church, Pastor Winston. Now it's over to you. God bless you. Yes, sir. Greetings. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Greetings. I must give Mr. Thompson what a wonderful work that he is doing. He brings people close to the Lord. I'm truly blessed. Amen. 
Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm still blessed by your word tonight. I've been caught by your yeah. message tonight. Mm -hmm. And I think on the topic, long suffering. I wonder, look at some of our writing. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Yes. Joy. Yes. Long suffering, mm -hmm. goodness, no goodness, yes, gentleness, sorry, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Again, these there's no law. Virgin, we must keep this food of this way. Yes, amen. God, this gift coming from above. Yes, the Master and Paul has reminded us. That we as Christians must love and must have long suffering. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know we can't suffer long. But when we look at India, I say we are going to do nothing. Pakistan. That's right. Take a minute again to Pakistan. I see mm -hmm. the man who stayed on complete. I see mm -hmm. this old man with one little, I don't know, four cars, with a oh, I was say, why Digging up, digging up. Man, the right guy, what are you looking for? What is going to fight? Mm -hmm. In that devastating collapse, his house collapse, and he's digging. And he was the one who digging. Up. So we're not going to do nothing. If somebody mm -hmm. step on your toe, you hear me up there. But we need to have patience and have long suffering for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we have to suffer long. Yes. We, want to we have to go to long suffering. And then we have to move up this way. It's okay. God, by the way, the brother's time will come. We are steadfast, keep it for our dear, and they hold our hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Long suffering, a very important, mm -hmm. interesting topic. God, we don't like to suffer. We don't like to wait on our Lord. So we have to have patience. Yes. Patience. Amen. Uh, let the Lord work it out for you. Let him order your step. Can you buy me one step up with my hand my uh, Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. You must have this, keep all these gifts. You must mm -hmm. keep to them, keep them. And teach it to our people too. Teach it. Everybody. Have you drink the water? Come on, show these things again. Because I'm just show. Because I'm show. I'm um, serious. I'm patient. God, by um, wait, wait, wait on God. I get my breakthrough till I took a year. Can't have to hold on to God and just get up every day and complain and say, Lord, why have to go to this? Why have to be sick? Why have to have this show? Why have to hold on to this patient? I wait for your healing. Hallelujah. Wait for your healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait for your healing. I'll wait a lot till my change comes. Yes, till your change comes. Amen. Yes, it is. Our change comes. Hallelujah. Spread the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray that for in sin and other sins. I pray and let the world know that Jesus is a healer. Yes. Yes, I think about it. And we have to wait and learn. God will give you your strength. That's my few words. And God bless you. And keep me and make you face. Shut up and give you peace. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor Winston. Pastor, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Winston is by Blue Rock Church in um, Leighton Stone. One nice and son, Minister Cassie. Lovely people of God. And, you know, really like them and they're really loving people. And God bless you, Pastor Winston. We will continue to pray for your deliverance in every way and your complete healing because our God is able. He's not our God that fail. It's good to know that our God is able. He can do the abundant above what we can even ask or think. And what we need to do is just believe Him. Believe Him. Uh, you know, God is not, he's not a failure. He never fails. He cannot fail. God um, specializing in things that men think is impossible. He's an impossible specialist. That's what God is. There's nothing hard for God to do. Nothing. So we serve a God who sits high and looks low. And he loves us with an everlasting love more than we even imagine. So God bless you, Pastor Winston. And we'll continue to hold up your 
and in faith, you know, God is able to do abundantly for us. And I bless all of everyone who's joined our teleconference tonight. I have my cousin Enid. God bless you, cousin Enid is on there. And also my son Delion is on. God bless you, Delion. And now we have PT and other joining us. God bless you all. Thank you, Sister Rose, for your lovely song. And God bless every one of you. And may we continue to hold fast unto and unto this that God has given us. We are, as I said today, we are so blessed. We don't we don't realize how blessed we are. Blessed because we can call upon Jesus. We are blessed. We are so blessed. And I, you know, when we realize our blessing, then you know, we we, we know we will be it's so awesome. It's so awesome. But God bless you. And Brother Clinton, God bless you all. We're going to close. In, amen. Brother Clinton, I want to ask you to close us in a short prayer, sir. Okay. Most gracious Father, as we come before you this evening again, we just Hallelujah. We are that you allow us to um, attend this teleconference. We thank you and we praise you. We Lord, praise you, Lord. You I thank you for Brother Thompson and his wife, O oh God. We thank you for each and every one who joined this yes. conference. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you to guide and protect us as we leave this um this teleconference. Mm. We may be put out to our own separate ways, O oh God. And we ask you for guidance and protection. Yes, Lord. As you are one and only true living God. We love you, dear Father, because you first Amen. God, you know, us before we were even conceived into our mother's womb. And you know what we will turn out to be, oh God. You know everything about us. Father God, we know the devil is a liar. He is old, old truck and oh God, he yes. to kill and to destroy. But Father God, you are miles ahead in front of him. And he only trying his best. Yes. Because he knows the Lord that his time is short on this earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory to God. And we cannot wait to see when you put that chain on him, oh God, and yeah. turn down. Hallelujah. Him. Amen. Oh. Amen. We thank you, praise you. We give you all the honor in Jesus' name. God and protect us again, oh God. And if we don't meet again, dear Father, we will meet sometime. In, in the other heaven. side. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Brother Clinton. God bless you, sir. And God bless every one of you. Thank you for joining us. And um, may the God bless and keep you through the course of the week. May